elections. The newspapers are starting this morning. EC puts limited voter registration on hold. Uh, the stressed savings loans companies, customers fit in limbo. That's uh, on the Daily Graphic. Uh, the Daily Guide, Gunman Storms Church. His photograph is here. Uh, fear grips Christians and Bank of Ghana sanctions backless banker. Yariga dares Martin Amidu. Uh, the Times this morning uh, focuses on Abofu here in Accra and says disaster looms at Abofu. Ten large or door drain slabs collapse and poses danger to lives and property. The vice president and his team have uh, been touring uh, the uh, uh, part of the area where the Konkumbas and the Choksis are engaged in that uh, conflict. Uh, he's calling for a ceasefire. It's on the Ghanaian time. The finder says teens on smoking spree were told that 1.3% of junior high school pupils who are aged between 13 and 15 smoke shisha. Hmm. 28 uh, do cigarettes. That's the story. My guest today talking this morning, a member of the NDC team, uh, an illegal uh, mind, uh, Edigi Tamako is here. Good morning. Good morning, and I hope man. You're uh, doing great. By the grace of God, I am. And uh, good morning to the ardent uh, viewers. And uh, good morning to my learned senior, Alice. Great. And uh, MP for uh, Futu, also a legal practitioner, a member of the NPP. Honorable Alexander Fiamakin is here. Good morning, too. Morning, sir. Hope you're doing great. Uh, by his grace. How's Winneba doing? Are we on? Mm. And we the, on. The, the university? So am, I, am I a member of the university? You're, you're, you're not, but you're the member of parliament, and your constituency uh, is home to the University of Education. Mm. So it's no interference? It is not. Oh! It's not. I see. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> I hope the university is doing okay. Uh, we'll leave it for another day. All right, I'm um, <coughs> Right, um, yeah. you commended our Muslim yes. brother and sister. They finished uh, yesterday. Yes, and then student. let me mm. add this to. It, uh, the vice president mm. um, has been doing so well. You know, in opposition, he took up this initiative of touring mosque and Zongo communities. And I think it's, been, it's going well, inspiring them, preaching peace, engaging them. You see, this is our politics. Sometimes people need your mere presence. Mm. The engagement alone is reassuring. And the effort is very commendable. At least, government through Dr. Baumia uh, has demonstrated a commitment mm. to religious tolerance and encouraging people to live in peace with one another. Uh, it, I don't know whether uh, a month ago you 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 had a look at my my Facebook page, right. where I posted a video of the ICGC. Uh, temple, uh, church building, and the uh, Fulani uh, mosque. I mean, the, the mosque at Winneba Junction, right. near the Freemasons Hall. <laughs> they share a common boundary. There is no wall. The ICGC church keys are kept by the Muslims. All right? And this demonstrates religious tolerance. Mm. And uh, I felt that the world must see and Get know to see this. what is happening. And I'm happy with all these uh, extremists uh, coming down from, uh, coming from Burkina mm. and the security related issues and all that. It is important for all of us to engage uh, uh, the youth, you know, of all religions, to be tolerant, to have hope, because there is frustration out there. People want jobs. People want support. People want to learn trade. People want to have their own daily livelihood. Now, it is one thing just leaving them to their fate, and another thing engaging them and giving them hope. And I think that is what uh, this government is doing, particularly in vulnerable areas. Mm. Uh, right, without belaboring the point. To me, with all the issues that have been raised on free SHS. It is one major step in solving the, 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 the problem of illiteracy. People finding themselves in a very vulnerable state. Mm. An educated populace 
would eventually create an enabling environment for peace. So people will not take advantage of you. And I think that with the threats we having from extremist uh, cells, movements here and there, mm. efforts by uh, Vice President Baumia in a, a situation, uh, in a period like this, is very commendable. commendable. And we have to uh, continue. That is not to say that effort done by other political parties and other mm. social activists, you know, are not being commended. I mean, that must continue mm. to give us that uh, peace that we want as a country to develop. Mm. Uh, 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 Eduji, let me uh, also give you the chance to, I mean, the Muslims have ended the, the fast and, uh, of course, the, the, the talk is about peace. As uh, Honorable Afinio Markin said, the Vice President has been championing the chief imam. So perhaps this is a time to commend them for taking the path to ensure uh, that we're able to uh, keep away from these uh, extremists who are virtually uh, on our necks. Um, right. I, I strongly believe that um, our country, Ghana, we are uniquely blessed mm. to have this level of diversity where we still live in absolute peace. Yes, it's possible to find one or two miscrimes, but at the end of the day, uh, what is key is the, the level at which we have tolerated each other. If you look at the religious diversity in this country, our Muslim brothers, the traditional worshippers, Rastafarians, Christians, and what have you, we've lived together largely in a very peaceful manner. In some other countries, it is possible to see um, extremists or terrorists go to churches, bomb them. You recall not too long ago, um, maybe um, a white supremacist going to a mosque, opening fire in New Zealand. We saw what happened in Sri Lanka not too long ago during the Easter festivities. We are currently witnessing the killings in Burkina Faso, just our neighbor up north. Um, so when you look at the posturing of the chief imam uh, and the manner in which he is taking the whole Muslim faith in a more reconciliatory manner. Mm. The Christ a king visit. Absolutely. If you put all of those things together, what it does is to broadly send a message that in this country we are each other's keeper and that we are very conscious of that, that we cannot have any meaningful development if there is no peace. And that is what has shaped the political engagement, the religious engagement in this country. We do not want to toil with our peace. The difficulty is um, the possibility for political office holders to take vain glory mm. for some of these happenings. Uh, the challenge, therefore, is, you see, when you begin to associate politics to some of these happenings, it colors it. It does not give it the true reflection. It's like people trying to, as it were, monopolize the peace that we are enjoying. I think it's a matter of collective effort that we've all come to this point. Mm. And more importantly, the person of the chief imam, I always say that uh, one of my biggest fear that can we have another chief imam replacing this one should Allah Almighty call him who would demonstrate this level of leadership. Ordinarily, he should be nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize for his singular effort in ensuring. In fact, there were times I recall when uh, a certain man of God or uh, misbehaved or made some comment. Mm. Even when the youth, Muslim youth, took issues with him. I think he, he would drop them, misbehaved and say they made some comment. Oh, okay. Made some comment. I mean, with your guidance. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've been taking a cue. Very well. At the end of the day, what happened effectively mm. was that he calmed the storm because it could have, you know, degenerated into something else. Overall, overall, he had come out as a great symbol. And so let me use this opportunity to say a kudos to mm. our Muslim brothers and sisters. While they were fasting, we were praying with them. I am confident that tomorrow, when the time of feast comes, they will not hesitate at all in inviting us.
table. We prayed with them to strengthen them in their fast. Grateful. Now let's touch on the daily graphic this morning. <coughs> EC puts limited voter registration on hold. Uh, uh, a statement signed by Mrs. Sylvia not of the communication department or the record says that uh, uh, following an injunction application filed at the Supreme Court to restrain uh, the commission from undertaking the exercise, it has decided to put uh, it on hold. Uh, it should have been on the 7th, June 7th to June 27th. Uh, a new date will be announced later. Uh, that's um, the story. But last month when DC announced that it will take a limited voter registration exercise in all districts, uh, the exercise was to offer Ghanaians who had attained 18 the opportunity to register. A few days after the EC's announcement, a Ghanaian based in Taboya in the Savannah region, Omar Yuba, went to the Supreme Court to place an injunction on the exercise. The applicant on May 23 sued the EC and the Attorney General over the EC's decision to register voters online during its uh, exercise on the grounds that the decision had not been provided for in law. Uh, the counsel for that, Omar Yuba, is uh, Dr. Dominic Ayini, and is expected to move the motion. Uh, if it, the story continues on page uh, 20, uh, and uh, quickly, um, yes, to move the motion, the interlocutory injunction on June 11, 2019. So uh, that's the story. Uh, Michael, let me start from here. Um, it, it, you are legal uh, brains. What is happening to the EC? Uh, some have suggested it could affect the EC's timetable, but uh, legally, the implications, uh, uh, they, they are dire for the 2020 elections? Oh, well, as part of, of our democracy, I'm sure uh, we should challenge decisions of state institutions, mm. and it's all for the betterment of Madagam. Uh, I have done this before, mm. uh, trying to engage EC, EC failing to engage me, uh, the matter going to court, and the whole uh, assembly election being placed on ice for close to uh, 10 months. The cost has so much. Well, that is the law. Mm. So if it will benefit you, it's not a matter of cost. The issue is, Having raised the, uh, the, 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 the cost matter, this would mean that issue should be more engaging. Uh, I think that the decision by the EC to limit the registration in the offices became a matter of concern. I don't know the level of engagement between the EC and the plaintiff. Right. But um, eventually the matter uh, has found its way in court. Fortunately, the law firm that uh, uh, is, is, is mounting this uh, uh, challenge. Uh, it's here. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, but uh, it's, it's a good exercise. Um, in the past, the issue of where an application is filed, mm. a, a, a rate is filed at the Supreme Court, whether or not it operates as a state, mm. became a matter of contention. <laughs> and then we argued and argued and argued. These days, people will file a rate at the Supreme Court and follow it up with uh, yeah. an, an injunction application so that... Uh, to stop whatever is going on. First. Well, to get uh, an issue raised to see whether EC would, uh, I mean, the court would uh, lean on it uh, in their favor. Now, the practice, as we know, is that when you are on notice of such an application, uh, you don't have to take a step. At least respect the court so that I don't do anything to undermine it. So let's see I'm sure he will tell us when the application will be heard. Mm. Normally, it should be two weeks after yeah. filing. Right. The court would hear you. It's an urgent matter. Uh, after the court's decision, we'll look at it. But let me also put this across. Yes, Electoral Commission. The law says that give opportunity for all uh, those who qualify to register to register. Um, why not all electoral areas? I think that's the question people have been raising. Why not do it at the polling stations? I think stakeholders are raising the, the issue of cost. Right. That it will cost the ordinary person some money to travel all the way to some district offices of the EC. And mind you, EC does not have 
a district office in every district. Some of the district offices combine about three constituencies or three municipalities or three districts. You, you get the point. Mm. So that issue has come up. That costs. Of course, let's leave the veil. Yeah. We the politicians. Because who would benefit from the vote? <laughs> who would be the ones to finance it? For people to go and register. Yes, I mean, you would want to encourage why? If you are going... Is it, is it healthy? Ah, but it's part of participatory democracy. It's not a matter of why. If I'm, I'm, I am Afenio Makin, I am likely to contest elections. Mm. And I know some 20, 18-year-old boys in my area. Or they are, say, at uh, Asebu. Mm. But they hail from Efutu. They are at Budubram. They are at Axim. They are Efutu people. It is my duty to encourage them to come and register home. It is, but is it healthy? No, you get it wrong if you raise that issue. As part of okay, democracy, as party, it's part doesn't have the resources to bust people. I'm it's not bussing. Don't it, use the it, word bussing. Okay, to, uh, you to get don't people, use the word bussing. You are getting them. Is it healthy? Why does NCC engage in public education? I don't want for your If the person that let, hold let me on, ask you this. I, will, I will not. And the NDC can afford to get. Or members of parliament of the NDC and MPP can afford to support people to go and register. What about the smaller parties? Right. Don't misconstrue and don't overly misplace your question with respect. My que the issue is mm. people must register. Yes. The question of affordability, that if you have to travel a distance, a village, and come to the city center where easy office is, it will cost you. Right. That is why I'm saying that if the person cannot afford you are a stakeholder. You have a compelling reason to help the person to go and register. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter of does it help, is it helpful, bashing. But is that it, is not is an issue. healthy for democracy? I am saying that, that it is good for resources must determine who is able to register. Listen. I'm listening. Democracy is not cheap. Okay. Now, there is a legitimate concern, i.e. the cost, that if people are supposed to go to the district office. And I share in that concern. I am of the view that EC can give a better explanation, engage the stakeholders the more, and give reasons. Why? Because, look, in Winneba, for instance, if you say you want to do limited registration at only the EC office, it may cost, but not too much, because Winneba is a small place. Right. So somebody from Jane Genazi may have to take a taxi mm -hmm. all the way to Winneba Junction area where the EC the office, office is. It may not be too expensive. But what of somebody at J. Kudria who has to come who to, has to, come to uh, Kaswa or Ewutu Senya? You know, you have to, it will cost you more. I don't know of other villages. Some will travel long distances to come. So I think those exceptional, you know, circumstances would have to be considered. Mm. But you see, the NDC is mounting this legal challenge. Oh, huh. The question is... No, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the NDC that is mounting the challenge. The man's name is uh, on, I, I Hold remember. on. I want to look into uh, his uh, uh, eyes. Uh, uh, no, uh, no, 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 I can't leave it to you. No, no, I want to look no, no, into his eyes no, no, for no, him. No, no, no. The NDC is not mounting this legal challenge. Honorable Afeyo Makin. Okay, okay. I've drawn. The Ghanaian is based in Daboya, in the Savannah region. His name is Uma Ayuba. No problem. So go ahead. No problem. Go ahead. No problem. A little political mistake. It can be tolerated. Okay, go ahead. All I'm saying is that... Get ready to wrap up. Well, I'm, 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 all I'm saying is that an NDC senior legal activist okay. with a team of NDC lawyers, eh? you see, they are supporting the citizen. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have supported a citizen before. Every citizen has a right to counsel. Sure. Very well. Yes, so so no matter their political yes, affiliation, yes, so go ahead. that's fine. <laughs> That's okay. I will leave it there. Okay, I'm grateful. <laughs> uh, and I, and you, so, uh, so, so this is it. Uh, uh, I think he's, uh, you will tell us exactly. It's in a small conflict of interest, but I know he would <laughs> navigate carefully. Let me give it a chance. Uh, what is happening and where are we going with this? You know, um, like um, Riley pointed out by the newspaper report, the injunction application is fixed for the 11th. Mm. That should be Tuesday. Um, and the, the whole idea is that the Electoral Commission's decision to 
as it were, to limit the limited registration exercise to only their district offices and some selected electoral areas to the mind of the plaintiff since against the constitutional provision relative to the work of the EC and the right to vote. And I've always maintained that overall in a democracy, if in terms of weighing rights, if there is any rights from which other rights are derived for, is the right to vote. Principally, is the right from which I will get Honorable Afenyo Markin. It is the right from which I will get the president. And that is the question of our participative democracy that we have. And if you look at the very ethos, the very understanding of our constitutional democracy is about participation. Our people having the opportunity and the only legitimate restraint on the exercise of this right to vote mm. is the fact that you must be registered. I mean, you must be a Ghanaian, that citizen, you must be 18 years and above, and you must be of sound mind. These three qualifications. And so if you look at the earlier cases, for instance, Tenadi versus the Electoral Commission, he actually traveled. When he came back, the EC says, we are done with the registration exercise. He quickly mounted an action at the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court speaking to um, um, Justice Aqua and uh, her ladyship, Banfordado, made the pronouncement very clear that the disabilities associated with the right to vote go beyond just being denied the right to vote. If you recall, when Sikul Gabra was first appointed as minister, his appointment was withdrawn because it came out that he was not a registered voter then until he became a registered voter before he had the opportunity. So the disabilities associated with this very important right to vote are huge. So when the Electoral Commission begin to use, say, costs as the basis to say that we are going to limit this process to our electoral office, and I always use Domi Kwabinya, he was using a photo. If somebody lives at Taifa Burkina, and the guy is municipal uh, uh, EC office. It's in Abukubi. If you are moving from Taifa Burkina, we are not looking at a village outside Accra. We are just talking about Accra here. You are leaving Taifa Burkina to go to Abukubi just to exercise this important constitutional right. The cost implication, not to the state, but to the individual. Once you create avenues, for the person not to feel like, what at all is this? At the end of the day, I'll go and stand in the sun, and you know, there's no benefit. What you doing is what is called voter suppression. It's a very subtle way of denying people the right to vote, I mean the right to be registered first, and the right to vote. That is why we are saying that, look, through the plaintiff, is that, look, let the matter be done at the various electoral areas. In any case, electoral so this is what is uh, uh, is in essence. Okay. What you're asking for electoral area registration? Absolutely. And you see, if you are telling me that we have six thousand five hundred electoral areas nationwide, and we have about twenty nine thousand polling stations nationwide, and you are reducing it from six thousand five hundred to a little over three hundred, quite clearly. You are putting people in a certain disadvantaged position. And in the particular case of the plaintiff, anyone who has the benefit of knowing that Boya Mankaragu is often called the overseas in the northern region of this country. Your station does some of this work. You notice that to move from one end mm. to another, the inconvenience. In any case, he is a member of parliament. The special budget committee of parliament. You have made enough budgetary allocation for our electoral committee. But you see, there is a bigger problem. And that is why my, I, I have a difficulty with the posturing with Marlene Senior Jane, who is also a lawyer, in all of this engagement. Look, let us be careful. We should know that the electoral commission can make or make 
this country. My senior here, he is a veteran in litigating the electoral commission. Sometimes the belligerents. Do you accept that description? Oh, he is a veteran. Uh, okay. The, the I would not. I would have, you know, said no. But I can <laughs> pick. Do you know that by September, the assembly's tenure, four years tenure, should be coming to an end? The question to ask is what measures have we put in place? Because as for the elected officer, the president does not have the power to extend their tenure because that's constitutional. His appointees, that the government appointees on the assemblies, he can legitimately deal with them, he can extend their tenure. But when it comes, so there are clear issues that the Electoral Commission must face than to take this posture. Because if in September the four-year tenor elapsed, mm. you have not put in place any measure to get that done. We are moving into a constitutional crisis. And so when IPAC, the political parties, begin to engage, I will beg the Electoral Commission, let us not take this thing to it's all about constructing this democracy to make it a better place for all of us. If in Accra mm. there will be so much inconvenience relative to just going to vote, you can imagine what is happening let, in our villages. Let me ask you this. Yes. When the EC agreed that, okay, uh, apart from the district offices, we're going to uh, get some electoral areas uh, to also run the exercise, it was not satisfactory enough. No. You, you see, that's why I just gave you the example. Mm. We have 6,500. You are moving it to a little over 300. Mm. I mean, even if you have the power to exercise a discretion. And I recall vividly, in Abu Ramadan, one of the arguments put forward by the Electoral Commission had to do with the fact that we have the discretion to... The Supreme Court, speaking through her leadership, C.J. Wood, made a point that discretion must be exercised within the confines of law. Your own CI-91, which the regulatory instrument says, mm. even in deciding electoral area, you look at suitability, the factors to consider. So it is not a discretion that is at large. Okay. It must be confined within the strict construction of law. And that is all that the plaintiff is saying. So I am, first of all, I want to say that the Electoral Commission itself has taken a cue, possibly from legal advice from their lawyers, to suspend the process. Mm. At the end of the day, the justices of our Supreme Court, they have set the roadmap already. If you recall, Abu Ramadan, number one, on the use of the NHIS card, when the Electoral Commission, upon all the jingles, the Supreme Court stopped them. Even when the assembly election had been, you know, managed over 300 and something million, based on my learned senior, his application before the court, the court found wisdom in his application, and at the end of the day, authoritatively pronounced on it, and that stopped the entire process. So okay. cost, cost. Should Would never wouldn't be, be a matter the here. Right, I, I, to I, 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 quickly, to, you know. and then <laughs> on a lighter <laughs> note, I think. Uh, you are, no, no, I, you are, no, no, I agree with you. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, you've made a very quickly, and then we'll take comments and move on. Except that I'll pass on the notoriety baton to you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you are now in charge. But you see, right, right. Council has spoken well. Oh, okay. He has spoken well. But the question is, <laughs> why the inconsistency? Oh. Was it not yesterday, only yesterday, that we were making the same argument? I was all over in the media mm. that the NDC said that no, we should do it at the offices of the Electoral Commission. Because you see, this is not the first time the Electoral Commission is doing limited registration at its district offices. We let's make no, no. Let's make uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, let's make okay, quickly. So then, at, uh, quickly. Admit, you see, we should make progress. Yes. But the point is that, <laughs> admit <laughs> that your life has changed. Oh, <laughs> admit <laughs> that okay. your argument no, is sudden. Hold it, on, it hold on, hold on. The hold poor on. Damascus no, no. experience. So, Damascus. Uh, let's make progress. He says he's now poor. He's <laughs> not okay. more poor. Let's, <laughs> I am grateful. <laughs> Let, let's deal with uh, Mr. Ma Ayaga and then Martin Namidu before we touch on the uh, microfinance. You are officers of the law. I mean, this matter is very well known in, 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 in the 
in the public domain, uh, the, the special prosecutor, uh, Mr. Yaga has been invited. But let's start, uh, Honorable uh, Afinika, let me start with you. Who, who, where is the law here? Right. Yes. Do we need this noise? Uh, Listen. Uh, that's why we are here. Right. Two, me, two lawyers me, to deal with this quickly. If yes. anybody, for any reason, files a charge sheet, I mean, uh, be the Attorney General, uh, Special Prosecutor against the a client. The Chief Justice? Against a client. And a client is making noise. I will just tell him that keep quiet. Don't waste your time. Look at the charge sheets. Mm. The facts. The evidence. And argue. Go to court quietly and follow it there. As for this noise, whether the special prosecutor doesn't like somebody. If tomorrow the man says, I've done something wrong. It is not for me to be making noise in the media. By the way, is uh, the special prosecutor the judge? Is he the judge? He's not. Don't we have confidence in our courts? So, the noise it needs, is needless. We don't need it. I mean, Honorable Ayariga, of course, mm. because he's a politician, he's uh, my colleague at ECOWAS Parliament, he may be worried. But I think that, I think that, the appropriate approach in dealing with this is silence. Let the man file. Wait and get saved. It would even be in your interest to allow the process to go on without um, perhaps technicalities. I'm not advising him. That is my view. Mm. I'm not advising him. He's a, he has every right to his own views and his counsel. Mm. But if the thing is in court and you know that this thing is frivolous, it will be in your interest for this to be dealt with as expeditious as possible in court. So we don't need it. Other than that, you see, we we'll discredit the, that, uh, the, uh, the special prosecutor's office the way we did to the AG's office. That if it's uh, goat stealing, that one, you go in five years because you are not a politician. So we, the politicians, must also just be quiet on some of these things, allow the legal machinery to operate. To, to operate. So that if you are, you are, you are acquitted and discharged, you celebrate, you wear your white wife, that after all this thing, it was frivolous. But I can also understand, if you are sitting here somewhere, and you feel that somebody wants to <laughs> set you up for political purpose, and your constituency people will now come after you, they, at the grassroots, they will say, oh, Comfort, he's a thief. They say he has stolen this and all that. So I can understand. <laughs> I mean, you would also be worried and you would want to mount some, some defense. The legal, the uh, okay. media defense. So, and all so that. far, it's you think that the, the process is legally, allowed? Mm. Legally, mm. you have nothing to worry mm. if you are innocent and a charge sheet is filed in court against you. I'm grateful. You shouldn't be worried. Honorable Kwame is watching. He says that he agrees with your position on the fact that uh, getting the people to register from their various locations will become a burden for uh, you political actors. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a fact. He, he, says, he says good morning. Yeah, I've understood his good morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, energy, please, come in. No, so, <laughs> and, and, and you see, in speaking to mm. this, um, let me just uh, read um, a statement made by then candidate Nanado Danko Akupado in 2009 on the critical question of rule of law. And this is what he says. Again, there is a need to strengthen the rule of law. During the short term of the Mills administration, there has been a lot of loose talk about taking people to court for political malfeasance and corruption. Indeed, recently, the National Security Advisor Brigadier Nunu Mensa announced that prosecutions were imminent. I have been I have been for accountability all my life and I'll never waver in that commitment. But I am also equally for the rule of law and due process. My commitment to these bedrock principles is not also negotiable. I believe a person is presumed innocent until proven guilty by a court of competent jurisdiction. That is why I will insist on the right of every accused person to fair trial before a properly constituted court. 
when plans, very important, when plans for prosecution are announced by a national security advisor, it appears that prosecutorial decisions are being made not by legal professionals, but by political operative with an ax to grind or scores to settle. The implications of such behavior for our democracy and legal system are dangerous. I am happy that the new Attorney General, who is the sole source of power for all prosecution, had repudiated the position of the National Security Advisor. Let the President, who is a lawyer, condemn such talk and ensure that during his tenure, the frontiers of our freedom and of our respect for the rule of law will be expanded and not diminished. And this is a public lecture given by Nana Dudankwe Kufuado on the 26th day of May 2009, Osu Ebenezer Presby Hall. I have referring had to, to the professor. Please, 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 please. No, no, no. I don't want for your mic. That was how it was done. I don't want for your mic. I mean, I will allow these interventions. You know. The reason why I had to do this is to give you a certain posturing of then candidate Nanado Dankwe Kufuado and his posturing today. He is a lawyer, just as he was referencing Professor John Ivan Satamil's May he so rest in peace. What has changed today? What has changed? Let's make progress. The political narrative appears convenient. Why? What is Honorable Mahama Yarika saying? He is simply saying that the political architecture that we have, that is the source of the powers of all of us, including Martin Amidu, because his powers, he draws it even from a statute. I am saying, as a member of parliament, I'm asserting a certain immunity not from prosecution, mm. but as to the attendance to court. And Muhammad Yaga had maintained that, look, on Mondays, I don't go to parliament. If you, the special prosecutor, we can agree, mm. I would unveil myself to the judicial process on any day, Monday. Why? When this investigation started over a year ago, Mahama Yaiga unveiled himself to the investigation process. In fact, I had to go to Yoko with him. Did you ever hear any, some, uh, anything of this nature? Because sometimes the Yoko persons will call. And so when parliament closes, meet us. So we'll go there sometime 3 p.m. We'll go if there's statement or interrogation. That is done. But the court process starts at 9. Not the same way Parliament will be started. So when the man has said, and in fact, the respected Right Honorable Speaker, Peter Lajete, one of the foremost great lawyers of this uh, republic, when the Dan Abodakwe scenario happened, there was an agreement. So Ambassador Dan Abodakwe was only going to court on Mondays. Mahama guy is never going to run away from these charges. Obviously, nobody is going to discuss his legal strategy on air. But we are confident in his innocence. He is willing and able to unveil himself to the judicial process. In any case, we are fair and clear in our minds that the final arbiter is not him, Martin Amedou. Mm. It's definitely going to be the judge who is going to sit on the matter. So let the impression not be created for whatever political mischief purposes, that somebody is running away from the state of justice. In fact, we believe that where we'll get justice is rather in the courts. I see. And not the offices of the special prosecutor. Mm. So my learned friend, he is an MP. Some of these things, and I always say criminal charges of this nature, regardless of its substance, can always be brought against anybody can always be brought against anybody. And so I was thinking that he being a member of parliament and also a lawyer, mm. possibly will firm the position of the law, even as he understands it, whether the nature of the immunity that he is asserting is sound in law or no, in no. fact. 
These are the things that we show. Uh, 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 no, he we, we is definitely not uh, running so, away. So there is a, a precedent. Let me be very honest. Quickly. We, we am, don't have a I lot am, of time. I am, on, I'm, I am unaware of the detailed president that he's referred to. He refers to Mr. Yeah, that piece, I, I, don't know. I don't know about okay. it. Right. But I maintain my position that when a charge sheet is filed, the appropriate thing is to make yourself available. And I agree with him that if there are issues, there are issues of immunity. These issues must be properly raised in court. Okay? There are times, I mean, case management. We go to court. I have been appearing for uh, client. Mm. Times that the judge will say, oh, Honorable Markin, would make your, bring your cases to Mondays because we know you don't go to time. Parliament on Mondays. Can we do it in the afternoon? That we agree at the High Court. We agree. Mm. 2 p.m. There are times that I'll go to court. Court of Appeal. The judges will spot you and say, oh, you are, we know you go to Parliament. Even at the Supreme Court. It's happened before. That the judges, you know, give a dispense say, oh, we know you go to parliament. Let's call your case fair. It's happened. Not once, not but twice. In that case, you're no, offering a professional Yes, service. I'm making yeah. a point. Different from you where you are the accused. Yes. So I am saying that these are matters that can be legitimately raised. You see, um, counsel, <laughs> one thing I also want us to do is to, as much as possible, mm. take away the partisan politics out of this. And I'm happy with your sincerity on the Yoko matter. That you were engaging Yoko right. on him. Nobody heard about it. Look, it is like the Snit uh, Saturday court. Yeah. You can be an MPP man in opposition. You can be an NDC man in opposition. Somebody may not like you as Snit hmm. and will say that, Charlie, you've not push paid. it. Mm. If you've not paid, you've not paid. It doesn't matter your political color. The person... Hmm. But because of your party color, if somebody wants to do you in by force prosecution, but the point is, go and pay. If you pay, whether he likes you or not, he cannot take you to Saturday court. Right, you get my point. So I would also urge my colleagues not to unduly neighbor on the issue of party... The immunity? No, no. Political coloration. No, no, no. Oh, I, okay. just, I just read but, okay. what but the, the very issues that uh, Ayariga is raising mm. should be articulated in court. The very issues is okay. Raised. Take I'm, it to court I'm grateful. and deal with it. It will uh, uh, And you wrap up for us and let's we'll go. Get I, mean, I mean, I mean, I am, I am uh, for it. No, the rule of law. Mm. Legitimately, Ayariga had not said anything outside the confines of the law. He had not said he won't go. Absolutely. No, no, what I'm saying is that even the immunity, even the Monday issue, why? You go to the court and then you raise it, it will rest it there. No, no, no. I mean, these are matters. Like I said, you don't discuss legal strategies. At this point, he had asserted a certain immunity. Yes, I mean, even questions of law, people disagree on whatever. But you talked about that with the issue, where. You talked about the Nunumesa issue, yeah. where he said certain... <laughs> pro now, I mean, uh, you know uh, the president even in Canada is speaking to prosecutions and no, what Come happened. on, no, no, quoting, well. quoting right. He says so to one people are before the court. Yes, yes. yes. So, so, I mean, so some, just said, uh, uh, but he's not saying that we are taking people... No, 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 to speak to you, uh, no, 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 very well, Counsel. very well, very well. You yeah, decide not to do okay. mischief, okay. don't do it. Okay. Till okay. president, it's don't, it's don't okay. put words in the mouth of the president. Okay. So, okay. so you, <laughs> you see, he's retreated. Once so again, you know that he has not said <laughs> oh. anything. You let him go. Congratulations, so our Muslim brothers uh, will join you tomorrow morning. <laughs> Have a great Monday morning. He's a bad Alexander Philip Mark, an MP for Futu, a member of the NPP, Eddie Jetamaku, a member of the NDC. Still grateful for your Tuesday morning. Stay here.